Hey, what's going on, movie lovers all over the world? You already know who it is. It's your favorite internet sweaty, your boy Mikey Savage 21, bringing you another movie review. And today, I'm going to be looking at the 2017 neo noir science fiction film directed by Denis Villeneuve, Blade Runner 2049. And this is the long awaited sequel to the 1982 film Blade Runner. And the film stars Ryan Gosling, Harrison Ford, with Anna D. Armas, Sylvia Hook, Robin Wright, Mackenzie Davis, Carla Jury, Lenny James, Dave Bautista, and Jared Leto, respectively. And this film was basically set 30 years after the original film, and the story depicts a bioengineered human named Kay who discovers the remains of a once pregnant replicant. And to prevent a possible war between the replicants and the humans, Kay is secretly tasked with finding the child and destroying all evidence related to it. All right, so I had a chance to check this movie out technically twice, but really only one time. Uh, I had bought my ticket and fell asleep the opening night. So somebody enjoyed my IMAX ticket, but then luckily I got to see it a couple of days later in IMAX. And again, what I really liked about this film is, to me, I felt like it encapsulated what it was like to be back in the 80s with that whole neo-noir film set in like Tokyo and whatnot. Um, we saw the same thing in the Ghost in the Shell remake um, with Scarlett Johansson. It looked aesthetically beautiful and everything, but the story suffered. Here, I felt like not only did we have beautiful set pieces directed, by Denny Villeneuve, but we also had a solid story to go with it as well. And so we follow Agent K, who's played by Ryan Gosling, all the way throughout the film. Again, he is a Blade Runner, just like Harrison Ford's character for the LAPD, and he's hunting down a retiring road older model replicants so this is what we ultimately see in the trailers what i really like about this film overall was not only was it able to reintroduce us to this franchise and you're able to go into this movie even if you haven't seen the original not only did it do that but it also had a solid story just like the first one did and it took elements for the first one and just kind of amplified a little bit also again with the character interactions i like how the new cast and the old cast they ultimately collided and i felt like it really worked um, again, Ryan Gosling as Officer Joe K. I really liked Ryan Gosling in this film. I've liked Ryan Gosling basically in everything I've seen him in, whether it's in The Nice Guys or whether it's in La La Land. I have really enjoyed everything that Ryan Gosling has been in so far. And so this movie is no exception. Again, I loved his and back and forth and interaction, whether it was with uh, him meeting uh, Sapper, uh, played by Dave Bautista, or whether it's uh, him meeting Jared Leto, uh, playing Neander Wallace, or even when it's when he ultimately meets Harrison Ford as Rick Deckard, the original Blade Runner from the 82 film, I felt like his interactions were really good. And then they also tried to basically set up this love story as well with Ana D. Armas as, as Joy. And I bought it. I really did. I bought it. I, I thought it was a little sweet romance. Again, at first, when they first introduced it, I was like, I don't know if I'm really buying this. And then as the movie progressed later on and events ended up happening, I said, OK, you know what? I'm fully sold in. I buy this again. I think Ryan Gosling was perfect casting for this lead role. I thought he elevated the film. And again, Harrison Ford, this looks like Harrison Ford was having fun once again. And, you know, if it's a film that Harrison Ford is having fun in, then it's a movie that you definitely need to check out because it looked like he was really having some fun in the last Star Wars movie that came out, The Force Awakens. And again, returning to another old property again, Harrison Ford looked like he was having a lot of fun. And I hopefully, if they do decide to make a sequel to this film, we'll get to see Harrison Ford come back and have some more fun. Again, uh, our main protagonist or antagonist we basically have here, we have uh, Love, who's played by Sylvia Hooks, I believe, or Hooks, however you say that name. Her and Jared Leto are basically the antagonists of this film. They're the ones that are guests that have the sinister motives and whatnot. And what I liked about Sylvia's performance as Love is, it's said that replicants are basically just humans, but but, you know, they're not completely human. Um, they're, you know, basically made from Jared Leto's character of Neander Wallace. He picks up after the original uh, creator. And so one of the things that the replicants is, is they said that they're supposed to show no emotion. They really don't have too many depths to them, that they're just basically one note. And what I liked about, again, Officer K and again, Love, was we got to see actual moments of emotion from them, where Jared Leto, I just thought Jared Leto was also a presence in this film, and he 
complimented Sylvia Hooks' character, Alv Love, because we mainly see those two together, and you basically had them on screen, and when one was on the screen and the other one was on the screen, they elevated the scene even more. And so with Sylvia Hooks' character, I felt like she was able to get the full emotion of what it's like to not be able to basically say no to Jared Leto's character, kind of similar to what the Harley Quinn thing and, uh, and the Joker relationship where Harley Quinn could say no, but she is just so twisted and bent on pleasing Mr. J and is so in love with him that she ultimately won't go against him. This is kind of the same matter where Sylvia Hoyt's character, again, is like his top dog, basically his main general, but she ultimately feels like she wants to say no at point, especially at points where certain other replicants die in front of her or get shot cold in blood, and you just see the tears running down her face. You just feel for the emotion for that character. Same thing uh, with Ana de Armas' character of Joy. For someone who's supposed to be a hologram and then again later on manifesting herself into a physical form you also have the, the the same thing going on with her you can feel the emotional weight because at one point she tells uh officer k of ryan Gosling's character i love you and he's like you don't have to say that but you can just tell in her eyes that she actually means that and again again that's good directing on denny vela news as a director i felt like he was able to get the best performances out of here lenny james it was good to see him popped up as mr cotton his role was very short in the film but i felt like when he he was on on screen his presence was felt same thing with Dave Bautista as Sapper Morton again his appearance isn't that very long but when he's on the screen he does have a presence and uh shout out to uh Fandango I don't know if you guys can see this or not uh they sent me this because I pre-ordered my ticket uh so I got a free Sapper Pop Funko movie toy from the new movie so yeah sometimes it pays off to be a movie fan if you know what I'm saying in terms of characters, I thought all the characters were very fleshed out. I didn't feel like anything was rushed. Again, this is a two-hour movie, two-hour-plus movie, I should say. I think the runtime came to two hours and 45 minutes. So you, the characters are definitely fleshed out. Now, in terms of the story... Now, the story did weigh in certain points, especially when you have a two-hour-plus film, that sometimes the story ends up weighing in certain parts. But I felt like the way that Denny Villeneuve directed this film, the same way he did with his last film of Arrival, and same thing with Sincario, these movies take time to build up, especially Arrival and Blade Runner 2049. These aren't films where... You just jump right into it. No, it slowly builds to it. So if you're basically... Not a person who doesn't mind buckling themselves in and enjoying the ride um, and going for this slow ride that ultimately pays off in the end, then you're not going to enjoy this film whatsoever. But if you enjoyed Arrival and you enjoyed how it started off slow and eventually got to where it needed to go, then you're definitely going to enjoy this sequel of Blade Runner 2049. So with all that positive said, I really recommend you go check this out in theaters. And again, I understand that IMAX is expensive. Believe me, my IMAX ticket was expensive and it's considering I had to pay for IMAX twice because I fell asleep the first time and they don't give you refunds if you fall asleep but I really do recommend you checking this out in IMAX now as far as like IMAX 3D and everything no I don't I didn't see it in 3D so I can't tell you if it enhanced the screening or not but I do definitely recommend you see this in IMAX because it looks so incredibly beautiful in IMAX and I guess the only thing other thing I would have to say about this film is it makes me sad it's not doing a little bit better in the box office because this is a really good film but I think this is one of those films where it's like too little too late again this is 30 years later and again people who are fans of it went out and saw it most likely opening weekend now we just hopefully got to see if it can ultimately hang in there in the box office at least within the top five i think it can but then when we get to the later month we'll see how it's doing by then but yeah i definitely recommend you go check this film out again uh all the casting uh was perfect casting here everybody looked great uh loved Jared Leto, Dave Bautista, Harrison Ford looked like he was having fun. Ryan Gosling was dialed in. All the female characters actually had depth and weight to them. They're just not female companions just to be female companions. They actually have some weight to them. And again, I loved Ana de Armas' performance as well as Sylvia Hoax's performance. And I have to give a shout out to Robin Wright as, as Lieutenant Jossie as well because... 
not only was she a crucial part of Ryan Gosling's character, she was also really well used in this film. And I really did enjoy the back and forth that she had with Officer K. And ultimately, it seemed like they might have been kind of hinting at some like repressed sexual feelings. And, you know, that would have been kind of a little bit strange. Would have been nice to see, though. And, and speaking of this. This is not a spoiler, but I feel like I have to say this. If you're going to bring your kids to see this and you're okay with them with the cursing and the violence and the action, the one thing I feel like I have to warn you about is Denny Villeneuve used a lot of nudity in this movie. A lot of nudity. A lot of nudity to the point where I was like, okay, is this getting obsessive or are you just still trying to be artistic? Because again, a lot of times in films, when people show you nude scenes, they're not doing it to say, hey, look, there's a pair of tits. Ooh, pretty. No, they're doing it for artistic purposes. Same thing with Mother. I didn't like Mother, but there were certain scenes where you could see uh, the director basically accented her nipples for a reason. He wasn't doing it just to say, hey, look, here's Jennifer Lawrence's nipples. No, he was doing it because he ultimately said, hey, check this out. I'm trying to do something artistic with it. And same thing Denny Villeneuve was doing with this as well. So again, it wasn't for sexual purposes, but I feel like I have to let you know that there is excessive nudity in this film. But in terms of a score, guys, and wrapping this whole thing up, I ultimately am going to give Blade Runner 2049 a 10 out of a 10. To me, Blade Runner 2049 was a great, great follow-up to the original Blade Runner film. And again, I, I saw Blade Runner maybe a few weeks ago, the original film. So I can't say that I'm a diehard fan who's just, you know, got nostalgia in his eyes. I'm not. I still think this is just as good, if not even a little bit better than the original Blade Runner film. All of the cast members seem like they were dialed in, including Harrison Ford. And we've seen Harrison Ford phone in some performances before. The story, again, was good. It, it was, had action when it had to have action in it. The ultimate conclusion of the film did leave it open-ended, and I like that. So if they want to do a sequel, they can. But if they don't want to do a sequel, then we have ourselves just a perfect, fine film that can stand on its own. Great movie just overall great movie and in terms of how many cups i'm going to give this six out of six cups hashtag how many cups remember to tweet at movie underscore java for all your movie related needs again they turn film fans like you and i into validated film critics and they retweet and share our opinions and reviews out with other film films across the world so if you're interested in that type of thing make sure you tweet at movie underscore java thank you as always for tuning in to the channel please make sure you tap that subscribe button if you enjoyed this review and you want to see more reviews like this i review all the latest comings and goings of movies and television sometimes as well make sure you stay tuned for the upcoming videos i have coming i'm finally gonna break do my promise and we are going to do that it character breakdown discussion of the losers club we are also going to be talking about what made the original kingsman film so good and we're going to be talking about the top five reasons that most horror movies and remakes don't do so well in the box office so make sure you stay tuned to the channel for all of those videos coming up thank you as always and remember as i always say please remember to become a savage stay a savage and peace out y'all Later.